welcome back to my channel. As you can tell, I'm a little bit flustered from just taking those thumbnail photos. I hope you found the thumbnail of this video amusing. It was certainly fun to take those photos. Um, but yes, welcome back, or welcome if you are new to my channel. If you've not been here before, hello, I'm Josie. I make fashion and beauty videos and travel and lifestyle and all that jazz two or three or sometimes four times a week. Um, so if you don't want to miss any videos from me, then hit the little subscribe button down there and then you will not miss any of my future videos, which would be wonderful. <laughs> so in today's video, I thought I would talk about this bad boy. It is the Dyson Supersonic Hairdryer. And I featured this a couple of times on my Snapchat and oh my gosh, you guys wanted to know so much about this. I had so many questions. Um, so to save my poor little fingers from typing away the same thing a million times, um, I don't have a million Snapchat followers, that's a slight exaggeration, I thought I would make a video to tell you all about it. So as you may know, there is a bit of an elephant in the room when it comes to this because of the price tag. This is £299.99, and pence, so it is not cheap. Um, and for that reason, it's a big investment and something that you're probably going to put quite a lot of thought into purchasing if you do decide to purchase it. So I thought it'd be useful to make a video to answer some questions and give my honest thoughts on the Dyson hairdryer. To make this video a little bit more interesting, I'm actually going to be comparing the Dyson Supersonic hairdryer to this, which is the Lee Stafford Coco Loco hairdryer, and this is one tenth of the price of the Dyson hairdryer, so this is $29.99. And I have to say, I also really like this hairdryer. Firstly, I mean look at it, it's pink and rose gold, um, and it works very well. So I thought it'd be very interesting to not only give a thorough review of the Dyson, but also compare it to a, an also new hairdryer that is one tenth of the cost. Okay, so let's get into the review. First of all, the Dyson Supersonic comes in this box. The box itself is really heavy, which actually kind of scared me when it arrived, because I was like, wow, I do not have the arm strength to be able to hold a hairdryer that heavy, but thankfully the hairdryer is much, much lighter than the box itself. Um, as you would imagine, for something that costs almost £300, the box is very informative. It has got lots of information on it. It has the main um, benefits of the Dyson hairdryer here on the front. So it says, helps prevent extreme heat damage to protect natural shine, fast drying, engineered for balance, and has a smoothing nozzle. So they are the main benefits um, of the Dyson Supersonic. And then on the back, you've got a almost like a diagram of the hairdryer itself with, let's see, with 19 different snippets of information, all of which are kind of benefits for using the hairdryer. And then it also shows you the different nozzles or attachments which come with the hairdryer down here. Inside the box, this is what you'll find. So, of course, here is the main hairdryer, minus the graphite grey and pink version. Ooh, got my hair caught on the box. Um, you've also got the two kind of normal uh, attachments, and then you've got the diffuser attachment down here. And also within the box, you've got this mat, which personally, for myself, is rather pointless because this would just collect dust on my dressing table, um, but I can imagine that if you are in an environment where you use your hairdryer a lot, maybe you're a hairdresser, um, or maybe you have a beautiful mahogany dressing table that you don't want to scratch, this could potentially be very useful. Another thing to point out at this stage is that the hairdryer doesn't actually get that hot itself, um, so it's not like it's a heat protect mat, although I guess it probably could be for your straighteners, but don't quote me on that because I don't know. The last thing in the box is this kind of like mobile phone strap, which I guess you could attach somehow to the Dyson if you wanted to hang it from the wall. Um, another thing which to me is slightly pointless, my Dyson Animal Hoover, I love to hang on the wall because it looks really snazzy, but my hairdryer, I just put it in the drawer when I'm finished with it, so not that useful to me. Okay, so let's go through the attachments. First of all, the diffuser. As you can see, I have long hair, very thick. Um, actually, individual hairs are fine, but I have a lot of it, so it feels thick, <laughs> if you wanted to know. Um, but yeah, it's naturally very straight, whereas this diffuser is better for short and curly hair, or long and curly hair. 
which I do not have, so I haven't used this personally, um, but I'd be very interested to know if any of you guys have, and if you have then let me know in the comments below how you get along with it, because I'd love to know how it works. But it very easily just clips on to the hairdryer like that, really instantly, on and off, with the magnetic attachment. So that for me is really useful, because with other hair dryers, sometimes you have to screw them on, you have to clip them on. It takes a little bit of faffing to get them on and off, whereas this is literally as easy as that. Super duper easy. And you would basically turn the hair dryer on and collect your hair up in it, scrunch it up to create really beautiful defined curls. That's what I believe that it would do. As I said, I haven't tried it. The attachment that personally I use is this one here, and this is the smoothing attachment. Once again, it clips in place, and it's got a fairly wide, but still rather concentrated um, blow area. Not sure the technical term. And for me, this is the one that I use for drying my hair on an everyday basis. I'd say it's a fairly gentle nozzle. It doesn't feel like it's really blasting the hair, which I really like because it feels like it's not doing so much damage to my hair. But if I was to want to really style my hair, get some really beautiful curls and create a perfect blow dry, then I would switch it over to the concentrated styling nozzle. And this one is much thinner on the edge here, so it really concentrates the airflow and it would be really good for styling the hair. Maybe you want to use a paddle brush and straighten your hair, in which case you'd want to um, use the dryer directly on the brush. This one would be a really good one for that, but it would take a lot longer if you wanted to dry your whole hair with this one. So that's what's inside the box. Now let's talk about the actual Dyson Supersonic hair dryer itself. First of all, obviously it looks very, very different to any hair dryer I have ever seen before. Dyson pride themselves on engineering, on being innovative, as we know from their vacuum cleaners, and the hair dryer is exactly the same. They have obviously spent a lot of time, a lot of money, in making this really different and definitely unique in a lot of ways. This part of the design I originally thought was where the air got sucked in and blown out to the other side, but that's actually not the case. This is pretty much just a design feature because the air gets filtered into the hairdryer from the bottom, which is great if, like me, you're quite clumsy, you're flipping your head upside down all over the place when you're drying and you've ever got your hair caught in the back of a hairdryer. That has not happened to me yet while using the Dyson, and I feel like it's a lot less likely to happen because the filter is here in the bottom. It's also removable, so really, really easy to clean. While I'm on that note, I will say that the filter on the back of the Lee Stafford is also in the back, and also, although not quite as easily, um, removable, can't get it off right now, so also easy to clean, uh, but this is of course the very standard, typical hairdryer shape that we know and love. As you'd expect from a 300 pound hairdryer, it feels very well made, it feels like it's made from really good materials, the buttons are uh, brushed silver, it's just it is kind of the same texture as a Dyson vacuum cleaner. We have got two in this house, so I am I'm pretty sure that I know what they feel like. And um, yeah, it just looks like a very well-made product. On the back here, you've got two buttons on the actual pink rim of the hairdryer. This one is a heat setting, so when the hairdryer is turned on, which I'll show you in a second, it gives you some LED lighting to show you how to adjust the heat, and then this side is the airflow, so you can make it really hot and really powerful, or you can change the settings to your personal preference. Um, it's quite uh, noisy on camera, although not noisy compared to other hairdryers, so I will show you those in an overlay clip now, just so you can see what they look like when the hairdryer is turned on. Down here you've got the on and off button and the uh, cool blast button and they're basically the only settings that you have on the hairdryer so it's not too complicated, you don't need to memorise an instruction booklet which is one thing that I was worried about, I thought if it's going to be a super expensive item uh, is it going to be really complicated to use? Well luckily no, settings are adjustable if you want them to be but to be honest most of the time I just turn it on and turn it off again and I don't really faff around with them too much. But speaking of the noise, it is a lot less noisy than other hair dryers that I've tried in the past and just so you guys can experience it, I'll turn it on now so that you can hear it. Cool myself down. So that's what it sounds like. It actually does remind me of one of my Dyson vacuum cleaners. 
it's a softer noise than other hair dryers, uh, not completely silent, but definitely much quieter than previous ones that I've used. I'm now going to go into a few more of the slightly technical details, and these are the details which for me make it much different, much more different, much differenter, to me make it more different, <laughs> which to me really differentiate the Dyson from other hair dryers that I've used. Firstly, I notice that it doesn't overheat. I mentioned at the beginning it never really feels too hot, whereas every other hair dryer that I've ever used often it gets really hot, especially now in summer when I don't want to be getting myself any hotter than I already am. This is a really great design detail for me. So what makes the Dyson super special is that it has a microprocessor within here which I don't really know what it means, but basically it makes the hairdryer itself an intelligent piece of kit so it knows when it's getting too hot and it adjusts its airflow accordingly. So very, very clever and it really works to keep the temperature of the hairdryer down. Inside the hairdryer is the Dyson V9 motor. That means absolutely nothing to me, but what I do know is that it's eight times faster and half the weight of the motors in traditional hair dryers, so you're getting a lot more power for no extra additional weight, which for me is really important actually. I haven't mentioned this yet, but it's a very light um, hair dryer. I only need like a few fingers to hold it up. It's a very light piece of kit. Um, and when you've got a lot of hair like I do, it can actually make your arm really ache if you spend 20 minutes blow drying your hair. So for it to be really light just saves me a lot of arm ache. So that's a really important factor for me. Comparing it actually to the Lee Stafford, this is also a very, very light um, piece of kit. The body of the Lee Stafford doesn't feel as expensive as a Dyson. I mean, as you'd expect, because it's a tenth of the price. It's beautiful, but it doesn't actually feel like terribly high quality material. If that doesn't bother you, like it doesn't really bother me, then it's absolutely fine. But don't expect to spend £30 on a hairdryer and for it to feel the same quality, obviously, as a £300 hairdryer. While I'm talking about this one, I should note that the settings, although they may not be as fancy and intelligent as the Dyson ones, are actually the same on this £30 hairdryer. You've got a cool blast button, you've got the on and off, you've got three different power settings and three different heat settings as well. So when it comes to personalising how your hairdryer works, £30 hairdryer and £300 hairdryer, exactly the same. So what you guys probably want to know is what do I actually think of it? Does it work? Does it make my hair feel better? Is it quicker? Well, I'll start with the last one. Is it quicker? Compared to my GHD air hairdryer, no, it's actually no quicker. As I said, I've got a lot of hair. I rarely completely dry my hair. I normally leave it to be about 80% dry and let the last 20% dry naturally, but I'd say that it takes about the same amount of time with the GHD hairdryer and the Dyson one. So if you've already got a pretty good hairdryer, you may not notice so much of a difference. However, when I think back to when I had my really old fabulous one, that took a hell of a long time. So if you're upgrading from a slightly older, less sophisticated hairdryer, then you probably will notice a difference. Elise Stafford, while it may be a cheap hairdryer, is definitely still a very, very good one. You've got this massive filter in the back. This sucks in a lot of air. It might be noisier than the Dyson, but it's pretty powerful. And I'd say that it only takes me maybe like 30 seconds longer to dry my hair with this one than it does with the Dyson. Both hair dryers have got a really long cable. I'd say the Dyson's is probably maybe like 10 centimeters longer. And if your mirror is not that close to your electric socket, then that long cable is a really important factor. It's also got uh, a flexible little connector down at the bottom, so you're not going to be getting any split wires, which is very good if you want this to last a long time, which at that price you definitely do. For me, the main benefit and the main thing that I've really been impressed with with the Dyson hairdryer is the way that my hair feels afterwards. And I was praying for there to be something, just one thing noticeable, noticeably better about this hairdryer than any other hairdryers that I've found, that I've tried. And thankfully, that one thing that really I do notice is how my hair feels. So I have got blonde coloured hair. I colour it a lot, I use heat on it a lot, so it can be very dry, very crispy and very coarse feeling considering it's blonde hair. 
but when I've used the Dyson, especially in these mid lengths of my hair, the ends, they still don't feel perfect, they need a lot more conditioning to feel perfect, but especially in the mid lengths of my hair, it has never felt so soft. I would say that's probably thanks to the way the air comes through this smoothing nozzle. So because it's so direct onto the hair shaft, it really does smooth down the hair particles. Hair particles? Hair follicles? Um, which does result in a very, very smooth finish. But going back to my £30 hair dryer, this is infused with coconut oil. And oil on my hair, they're just best friends. My hair loves oil. Although I'm kind of sceptical as to how the coconut oil actually gets to the hair, how much difference it makes, either way, I find that this hairdryer does make my hair much smoother than my older hairdryers. How that coconut infusion works, I do not know, but I like the idea of it and um, it works. So now we have to address the price. The Dyson Supersonic Hairdryer is £300 and that is a lot of money for a hairdryer. It's a lot of money for stop and it's a lot of money for a hairdryer. A lot of you are going to be wanting to know, is it worth it? And I really think that depends on you as a person. If you struggle with your hair and you just really need it to be smoother, you really need some good quality machinery on your hair, then yeah, it probably is worth it because I spend £300 on two sets of hair colouring and that doesn't last as long as a hair dryer lasts. So when you think of it like that, it's actually not that bad a deal considering how often you use a hair dryer and how much of an impact your hair makes on first impressions, on how you look and how you feel. So when you think of it like that, actually not too bad. However, if, like me, your hair actually isn't too picky between hair dryers, then I'd probably be tempted to get a cheaper version. And there are so many good, budget hair dryers on the market right now. As I've mentioned throughout this video, I really like this one from Lee Stafford. It's beautiful, it dries my hair, has the settings that I need, it's light. I really can't fault this hair dryer. So if I was to see the two in the shop, if I had endless amounts of money, I'd get the Dyson of course because it's really snazzy, but with my actual budget, I'd get the Lee Stafford. So guys, that's it for my review of the Dyson Supersonic Hairdryer. I hope you found this interesting and I hope you found it um, interesting that I've kind of compared two. Of course, one being a tenth of the price of the other. Hopefully that made it a little bit more um, relatable for you. I'm sure there are things you're still going to want to know if you're seriously considering making the purchase. So leave any questions that you've got in the comment section below or tweet me or Snapchat me. I'll leave again all my social media links down below and I'll do my best to get back to you because honestly I know that it's a very expensive piece and you're going to have a lot of questions if you're going to want to buy it. So I will try my best to help you out. If you found this video useful or entertaining or anything else then please do give it a thumbs up. That would mean a lot to me. Um, and say hello if you're new. If you are, then please hit that little subscribe button, in which case I will see you in my future videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon. Have a wonderful day and cheerio. Bye.